just on my way now up uh, to South Cerny. Well, just driving through South Cerny village now. And uh, looking forward to getting on Hample. I haven't fished it for a good few years. But I feel like giving it a go. Hopefully it's not too rammed. I mean, worst comes to worst, I can always uh, go on a different lake. But I've got Hample in my mind. I'm going to give it a bash. got a 48-hour session uh, coming up. So uh, the conditions are looking good. It's a little bit chilly. So the temperatures are showing three degrees in the car. Outside temperature, so it's a bit, uh, definitely a bit chilly. But other than that, conditions are looking good. Slightly overcast. Um, what tactics I got in my mind? I'm obviously gonna have to suss it out first. Have a good walk around the lake, see if I can see anything. It's quite a deep lake. It's a hand pool. Um, I think average depth is about 13 to 18 foot if I remember rightly I have caught from this lake previously but that was in the summertime stalking stalking them in the margins um, since then the areas that I have caught them from they have put signs up saying you're not allowed to fish in those areas no more just due to uh, inexperienced anglers fish in the shallows and getting fish snagged up so which is fair enough but um yeah, I'm on my own this weekend. Me old mate Wasp is uh, fishing elsewhere, shall we say. With a, with a friend from work, giving him some... Uh, got a new angler, so he's giving him some tips. Wasp is doing a bit of a tuition weekend, I suppose. We can call it. So, um... Yeah, I mean, I've got a nice bottle mix. Got some pigeon conditioner. A bit of corn. Um, a load of sal chopped up in there. So I've got that option. Maybe if the weather improves, we might get a zigs on the go. But um, we'll play it by ear. But for now, and uh, see how we go. It's, um, I don't know if I told you the date already, but it is the 26th of February, 2016. So episode two of Front of Land, isn't it? Well, um, I'll keep it updated shortly when I arrive and uh, see what the situation is. tight lines keep it real Alright guys, welcome to uh, Front of Land and that, episode 2, and uh, that's it, like I said to you earlier, we're on Hample, 48 hours, well a little bit less than that now, because I've had the rods out about an hour, but just before I let you know, I'm in my bivvy, just watching the water, first cup of tea, on the go, and uh, I'll flip the camera around and let you see what, um, what I can see. See, I'm only like two rods out on uh, this lake, so two rods it is. I'd like to have three, but you know. Fishing what you probably would call peg one. What well, depends which way you look at it, but I'd probably call it peg one. Just up past the, the shallows there, as they call it. The other side of that reeds is non fishable now. But fish do tend to hold up in there when it warms up a bit, so. Fingers crossed, I've got my rods. If you can just see this tree here, bit there. Not very far at all, probably 40 yards in about 16, 17 foot of water, just on a bit of um, like rocky gravel, like quite bumpy gravel. Um, there's a big bar that runs through there. And I've got a shoddy homemade almond. Maybe we'll pop up on there. Nice pink one. And a uh, left hand rod fishing the simp just sort of two foot away from it. With a 13 foot zig on there. It's a bit overcast really for the zig, but you never know. 
Hopefully many people use that method on here, so Speak to the bailiff for here, he's been fishing really bad since Christmas Only two or three fish per night, so Looks like I'm going to be up against it Anything happens, I'll uh, Give you a shake Until then Front of the land then now First brew of the session. Good morning, guys. It's um first morning on my 48 hour trip, and a uh, bit of an uneventful evening to be fair. I had a few liners in it, ended up getting breamed out about midnight. Wasn't a bad bream to be fair, about four and a half five pound. I'll put the pictures up on the, uh, when I make the video, I'll edit and I'll put a picture of it on there. There's only one on the map, but I just thought I'd do a quickie. And that was on the, um, what was that one? That was on the, um, Sticky Beats, Pineapple and Embuteric, Wafter in a little PVA stick. Fished over my spotted area. But, um, I thought I'd sign back on and, um, just show you, i just been having a marker rain this morning and, uh, trying to just perfect my spot a little bit more, get some good details of the topography of the bottom of the lake, but um been quite saddened to uh, get snagged up to a trailer, and uh, this is the rig that I pulled in, it just goes to show that um, there's still some some people out there fishing with uh, what I call death rigs, which is absolutely ridiculous with the stuff on the market as well, it's um, totally ridiculous, I'll, I'll just show you the rig and why it is so dangerous for the carp. Uh, I'll just spin the camera around and show you. Front of landing that. Well, guys, if you look at this rig, it looks like some sort of old wivy pool set up with a bit of tube and the hook's actually snapped. But whether or not that's in the fish's mouth still, we'll never know, will we? But with maybe a little bit of black fin tied on. Some sort of braid with a shot there. Which is funny. There's where it gets interesting. Got the swivel pushed in here into the leg clip, which is a safety leg clip, which is fine. But if you'll notice, the main line is, looks like amnesia to me, which is okay, yeah, again, fine. But if you look at there, there's two split shots pitched on very, very tight to the line. So, therefore, this, this sleeve or tail rubber. Can't slide back, therefore the lead cannot eject. So whichever the poor fish was uh, tethered and trailing a good twenty foot of black amnesia and a three and a half ounce lead hasn't got hope in hell of um, shedding this lead. Again, guys, I just like to point out that these are not designed to be pushed on up to there. It's absolutely ridiculous. No need of it. Obviously the bloke didn't even get the fishing anyway.